Welcome to Last Said News. My name is Rob, and today just the thumbnail and title suggest it really does come down to everything that's been going on in the crypto and digital asset space as far as bankruptcies. And I got to tell you, it really comes down to resiliency. What I'm talking about is there was a tweet from Cameron Winklevoss. And Winklevoss, he's, or Cameron is uh, part of the uh, Winklevoss twins. They're the CEO and owners of uh, Gemini uh, Centralized Exchange. And unfortunately, or fortunately, at one point, they had a, a program called Earn. And with Earn, you could put your crypto into this earn program, it would gain you yield. And they used digital currency groups, uh, Genesis platform to uh, garner that yield. Unfortunately, uh, Genesis, which was uh, one of four of the subsidiaries of the digital currency group, uh, one being uh, Grayscale, Foundry, Coindesk, and of course, Genesis. Genesis just filed for chapter 11 a couple of days ago. And uh, the Winklevoss came out and they said this, look, we know that Genesis is going through chapter 11. We've been working around the clock to negotiate an acceptable solution with Barry Sobert. Barry Sobert is a CEO of uh, DCG Group. He goes, the good news is that by seeking the protection of the bankruptcy court, Genesis will be subject to judicial oversight and be required to provide discovery into the mechanics that brought us to this point. Crucially, the decision to put Genesis in a bankruptcy does not insulate Barry, DCG, and all the others. This is where it gets a little spicy. He says, We've been preparing to take direct legal action against Barry, DCG, and others who share responsibility for the fraud that has caused harm to the 340,000 plus earn users and others duped by Genesis and its accomplices. And look, I mean, Cameron and Tyler, they're not going to get off scot-free here. They're going to ha unfortunately have to bear some of that burden of the decision that they, that they did to go with Genesis. However, I will just caution everybody about this, and that is that so far with the bankruptcies, hasn't really been really great, except for uh, the old guard or the exchanges or the people that were running the exchanges and the lawyers. Those are the only ones that really make out like bandits during Chapter 11. So I hope that there is a, a fast resolution uh, to this, but I don't see it uh, being very quickly. And you can just take a look uh, no farther than Celsius and Voyager, and of course now BlockFi, and unfortunately Genesis. But to finish this little snippet up, uh, Cameron comes out and says, look, unless Barry and DCG come to their senses and make a fair offer to creditors, we will be filing a lawsuit against Barry and DCG imminently. So let me know anything about that in the comments section. I'm not a big fan of chapter 11. I sometimes just think it would just be easier just to go through chapter seven, liquidate everything, let everybody start fresh and uh, wash this out of their system. And speaking of chapter 11 and bankruptcies, this is uh, John J. Ray. He is the new CEO of FTX. And he was speaking before Congress and he talks about how uh, FTX could restart very soon. And what he's talking about here is he's saying, look, he goes, we're looking at the possibility of reviving the bankruptcy crypto exchange, FTX, as we work to return money to the failed company's customers and creditors. Again, I'm not a big believer in chapter 11 and them you know, getting out of it. And uh, it's gonna be very hard to return that money when unfortunately, the United States government lays claim to 700 million. Here's what happened. This just came out uh, today. U.S. government wants to take control of the nearly 700 million of assets it seized earlier this month. This is included in the property are over 55 million Robinhood shares worth a half a billion that was bought with Alameda money. And this is at the center of a fight between Bankman Freed, FTX, and BlockFi. Officials are also moving to claim 171 million in cash from a series of bank accounts linked to Bankman Freed's web of companies. And this is a statement from a U.S. government lawyer. He states, we believe that these assets are not property in the bankruptcy estate, meaning we believe that those assets, which were your assets, is now ours. So again, I don't see how this is going to uh, be a very good news moving forward. But I will just say this, resiliency. If we can just take a look here, out of all this news, and it's not the most positive news, let's be honest, over the last week, 10 days, we've seen Bitcoin rally. We've seen the crypto market rally. Bitcoin in the last seven days is up 17%. Ethereum, 14%. Uh, XRP, 7%. Solana, the big winner, I think, right now, 13.6 and 40% for the week. OKB, okay, I don't know why they're even up. It makes no sense. Another 
<sighs> crypto project linked to an exchange. I'm not going to be into that. But again, very resilient. And if we take a look at the four-year cycles, which I still believe in, the reset years, which are two years after the all-time highs, and this happened in 2021, we had an all-time high, then a dip, 2022, brutal, then a reset. Same thing happens last four-year cycles. We had a halving, all-time high, a dip, and a reset. Look at that reset year. Looked pretty good. And even if we go back to the reset year for 2015, it was still sideways with some you know, nice little peaks, but not huge drop-offs until we hit to the, uh, the reset years. And then also for, of course, the halving years. We can see that just in 2020, the halving year was looked pretty good. 2016, pretty flat, but because of course we're just not looking at uh, logarithmic wise, but I still think we've got a lot of room to run. So out of all this bad news, out of all the things that we've lost, we're still holding up quite nicely. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And then lastly, or second to last, Ethereum. Uh, I own Ethereum. Everything I talk about, I own in this channel. I'm very biased, but I just want to get people's opinion on this one. It looks like the core developers, which there's about 30 or so in Ethereum, they're looking to postpone the Shanghai upgrade. The Shanghai upgrade is what's going to allow you, if you have staked your Ethereum, to unstake your Ethereum and take those rewards. So uh, people have given Ethereum a lot of guff over this about you know pushbacks and, and taking their time, but it looks like it might happen. And before you pass judgment, just let me read this part. So the Shanghai appears to launch by March, Core developer Mika Zoltu said this, it feels like we're not thinking about the long-term health of Ethereum. A few of the other 30 or so core developers are worried that a recent decision to forego a technical adjustment to Shanghai will expose Ethereum to unnecessary technical debt with unknown implications for the years ahead. The tweak that they want to do would have only taken an extra two to four weeks to implement by these developers' estimates and amount of time the rest of Ethereum's core developers weren't willing to keep the public waiting. Here's what I'm going to say. I don't know where you guys are at. Are you watching the, the video right now? I'm all for it. Like, I don't have anything staked up. I don't. But if you can just take a couple of weeks or maybe even a month, who cares as long as we get this done the right way? We've had enough problems in 2022 and now 2023. So let's just take our time, take a little bit of extra uh, a extra time to actually get this thing done rightly. And then we can move on. We've already had enough problems. Let's just do this thing right and move it. If you uh, agree with this, reach out to the Theorem Foundation and just ask them, hey, I have no problem with this. Maybe they'll take our recommendations and move from there. And lastly, I, I know uh, in this bear market, something nothing's really going on. I'm gonna take a look at and get back into some, what I call some degen plays. And there's two things I want to look at. There's a game called Alaska Gold Rush, and also this one that you may remember called Flappy Bird. And I'm taking a look at these because they're both about to launch pretty soon. And yes, if you're gonna, to answer your question, I'm probably going to invest into this one, and I'm probably going to invest in a Flappy Bird, just how it is. I always thought gaming would do pretty well. But I'm not a big platform gamer guy, but this one looks pretty good as far as this is Web3 gaming, mind you. And this is the graphics, and it looks like they're going to be launching, like I said, like in a month or two for the actual game. So if you're into like these types of things where it's like really good graphics and really good gameplay, this might be for you. And I'm just going to see how this works out. I personally think that as many gamers are out there for this one, I think there's going to be three, four, or five X where people are going to want to play this stupid game where it's just you just tap a button and you play to earn different flappy coin or whatever they're going to do with this one. So it'll be interesting. I'm going to do a deep dive over on Dan Degen. I won't be on this channel. This is for the degenerate plays. But I think I have a thesis. And the thesis is I think there's a lot of more casual game gamers than there are gamers who want to play something like with this uh, Alaska Gold Rush. I think both are going to be good games. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. So subscribe. Hopefully YouTube will notify you. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.